My knob's not very central. Hello, I'm Andrew Armstrong and welcome to the Back Office Teardown Lab. If you recall, I bought this EEPROM eraser and an EEPROM is an erasable programmable ROM chip and they look a little bit like this and they have a little window in them. Hello! And you're looking at the actual memory itself. So imagine you took a transistor and you whopped the top off it and then you added a billion, million, million more of those transistors. That's what it would look like. And if you shine the light, a bright UV light on top, you're going to affect its brain. And that's what happens. That's, that's the science. You're affecting its brain. I've never actually learnt why UV affects it, to be honest with you, but I'm assuming it's a semi-organic material. Who knows? Do we really care now? It's an ancient technology. We don't use them anymore much. So, I had this EEPROM eraser and it's... I'm going to title this video How to Change the Lamp in it and I'll tell you the history while I'm just quickly unscrewing it. Um, the actual EEPROM eraser came from China smashed. I literally just threw away all the glass bits and bobs and uh, I complained. I said, hey guy, I don't want this, it's broke. And they said, don't worry, we'll give you five dollars back. And I'm like, no, I don't want five dollars back because this is a broke piece of crap and I can't get on with my work. So I want to send it back to you. And instead of letting me send it back to them, I guess it cost them in postage, they said, don't worry guy, you can keep this. It's yours now. And I'm like, okay. So I went online and I ordered this. It cost me three UK pounds and it apparently is a lamp that is capable of the UV erasing and it's a UV bright T54W. And look at that. Can you see? I'm going to zoom in and show you. In the lamp, do you see that? That's mercury. You can see the actual mercury. So we see that mercury vapor lamp. There's the mercury that's in the lamp needed for whatever it does. I think it vaporizes and then allows the conduction, the confarction to take place. So if you recall, we opened this up. Look at my last video if you didn't see what I was doing. But a problem with these is that they are actually soldered in. And I could have bought potentially something to actually let you clip these on, but I didn't. So I just bought bulb. But there you go, that's what the bulb looks like and it sits in there. So we're going to go through the replacement process. So imagine you've removed the bulb by desoldering the contacts that are there. And that's what you'll do. Make sure it's unplugged because when I went to desolder it, it wasn't unplugged and I blew out all the fuses in my house. Uh, that was not good, by the way, because my computer was on and it was rendering a video. So I was much annoyed. Actually, I don't even know what I did with that video. I probably uploaded it to YouTube. So if one of my YouTube videos doesn't work properly, that was the one. I totally forgot about that. What video was it? So be a bit coy on this. Don't hang around too much because although these, these things in the factory go through a process of being heated and doing all sorts of stuff, you really don't want to get loads of heat on the end of a bulb that you might want to break because it... Ah, it's still cool. That's fine. You definitely don't want to break that bulb because of the heat. That will really annoy you. That will annoy you more than it coming broken from China. I can tell you because it was your fault and you did it. So I'm just going to attach one wire. Now, be a bit cautious. Be a bit cautious on it. I don't think there's a polarity, so don't worry about that. Just make sure you get them. But make sure they don't touch each other. There's no... Oh, no. There's a lot of heat on that bit of brass. I'll wait a little while. Wait a little bit of extra time. <laughs> Might take time to cool down. There you go. You don't want them to bridge because I think there's potentially um, house fusing voltages in that. So that's that one done on that side. We're going to do the other side now. This was easy, isn't it? I say it was easy. Changing a lamp, though, shouldn't involve a soldering iron in most cases, should it? But at the same time, if this has the longevity of a normal lamp, so imagine a fluorescent tube of this size that's in your like bedroom lamp, that lasts forever, doesn't it? You've got that lasting forever and a day. So this is only running at, is it 15 minutes a time or so? So that one wasn't very nicely tint. I have to admit, that wasn't very nicely tint. There you go, solder just went dull there. 
and then it goes dull, that's my time to swoop in. I'm trying it a different way, by the way. This way is a little bit more risky for the bridging. So this way I'm going parallel to the pins, and this way I was going perpendicular to the pins, and uh, ooh, not very well on the look of it. I'm gonna go one wire parallel, just because if you've got a problem, they could short. So you could put a bit of heat shrink on them too to make sure they're extra good. But I'm gonna go with the quality assurance from China and they didn't need the heat shrink. They weren't really that bothered about that. So uh, I guess if they're not bothered, it means it's safe. Your circuit is safe. Now what I will do though, because um, let's just see, it's unlikely you could, but uh, maybe you could get your finger in there and touch that. So I'm gonna put a little bit of my insulation tape on there. This is a short video, good. Should only be a few minutes. But then we might as well go through the operation. Wow, this lamp's warm. <laughs> Just shows you how much heat gets carried through from the old soldering, doesn't it? That's one end. And that second end come in. So I think these lamps are uh, anti-germ lamps or something, someone was telling me. So the type you might have in a fish tank. So that's what they're originally used for. And we're using them for this purpose, which is A-OK -okay by me. So let's pop that in like that. Now I don't suspect they get very hot, but if you're worried about it, like halogen lamps and things, you're supposed to give them a little rub down to make sure they don't have any fingerprinties on there. I'm just gonna do that. Mm -hmm. And then you've got this other wire, which I'm a little bit worried about. You can see it there. Let's try to root this around. We've got a lot of things to root around. Um, before we do though, should we plug it in? Yeah, that looks dangerous. Let's plug it in. I've got the American plug. I'm gonna put a UK plug on that later, by the way, in case you're wondering. So it is plugged in, but is it on? Be very careful. All these things could shock you. They could give you shock and awe. Right, I'm gonna turn this to the on position. Am I seeing anything? Am I seeing UV or not? Doesn't look like it. Oh, there we go. I can see something. See it there? Ooh. Right, so there's definitely some UV action going on there. So that's probably okay. Wow, I can smell some high tension stuff going on. So what I'm gonna do though, and you do the same, if you're putting this back in, I was going to say, make sure this wire is rooted so that it's not getting stuck in that drawer in any shape or form. So I'm just going to root it back this way. But really, ideally, it should be underneath that motor, I think. I suspect, I suspect that it will be optimal from a non-getting a shock in the future sort of a way. So let's just do that, shall we? I'm wondering that smell. I'm sm the smell I'm smelling smells like it was ozone. I think it... Could the UV be ionizing the air? Or ionizing my eyeballs? That's always a possibility. We could do something that could test for ozone gas. That would be quite interesting. How do you test for ozone gas apart from sniffing it with your nose? Okay, let's get that in like that. It's very dainty though, isn't it? I am no, I'm recognizing now, looking at it, we have a lot of other random wires that are just all over the place. The mains cable actually has a knot in it, as strain relief. So do be careful. <laughs> so we'll, we'll check that out momentarily, don't worry. And I'm gonna put a UK plug on this. But let's just check out that. Um, yeah, it's kind of got a, stra a strain relief grommet anyway, but then they've put a knot in for belt and braces. But probably what I would advise is test that there you go, so you get the knot a little bit tighter. So that's not going anywhere now. Right, so let's see how we're gonna deal with these wires. I'm gonna root them behind these pegs so they don't go again anywhere near that drawer because I kind of think that drawer could attack them. So just, just get everything you can. Give it an extra twist around there. A little twist, a flick of the wrist. Look at that, that's good too. Even that red one might go around. Yeah, I know you can't see, I'm just, I'm just, I'll let you know. Yeah, so now I managed to get all the wires going around there, so they're not even anywhere near this thing. So I'm going to pop the screws in, and uh, 
we'll try it out. So what happens is that UV light hits that chip. Um, by the way, it's the chip that I use in my Atari ST interface. Comes with diagnostic chips by default, but you can buy all the parts separately. And I'm going to be doing way loads of projects. We have a case for it too. Did you see the case? Oh, my knob's not very centralised, is it? Is that me? Mm hmm. So when you're doing this, by the way, it looks like there might be the opportunity to move that thing around a bit, the old knobbage. Uh, yeah, I'll deal with that later. I can centralise that. But it doesn't stop me what I want to do next. So I'm just going to show you how to wire the old plug, because I know it sounds silly, but some people still uh, ask me, how do you do it? So let's just do it, shall we? So you can see I've chopped the end off and I'm going to split the two wires. So there's no earth in this, which is a little bit nasty. Now, if you want to do a better job uh, when you're splitting the wire down, I would suggest get something like a blade very gently because you don't want to go through the insulation, the internal insulation. In fact, just go through the outer sheath if you can or just score the outer sheath is enough. Uh, you can actually then just peel these off relatively cleanly and if it doesn't go cleanly you know give it a little just a little kiss with the knife again till that's nice and clean like that. It's a good job then that's why. I know I don't normally do good jobs but it's because I'm messing with mains power here. There are times when I do take a little bit of care so what you want to do is get your fuse out and all your pieces are ready. And I'm sure this is of fascinating interest to people who aren't in the UK to see how uh, how we do things over here, how the queen wires are plugged. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just unscrew that strain relief and gosh, British strain relief is the best strain relief. Dun, dun, dun. Let's get that going. In fact, I'm going to go for broke and just take it off totally. Look at that. Just loosen it out and I'm going to spin it round so we're totally exposed to the elements. Now you want to be careful when you're cutting the uh, lengths of these so you know your two locations. So they're kind of designed, in fact they are definitely designed, so that the wires pull out in a certain order. So when you have it here, you can see there's your neutral and there's your live and your live is designed to pull out first and your earth is designed to pull out last if you have one. So that's why you want to make sure everything is the right length. So there's normally a guide actually, I think I probably threw it away. Hmm. On the UK plugs, they often come with a guide which shows you the different lengths to cut these at. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to strip the, this um, neutral looked about right anyway, so I'm just going to strip it a bit. Good old strippage there. I'm going to wind that in. Wind it in! And then on that bran, you can see the bran is a bit long, so I'm just going to say, okay, where its strip length is going to be, is going to be a good, I'm going to say 8mm shorter than the neutral. So the live, I'm cutting 8mm shorter than the neutral. It should do. This is thin wire. So something else I'm going to do <laughs> is not use a 13 amp fuse, because this thing does not need a 13 amp fuse at all, I can assure you. I'm going to have a look in my box to see what amperages we do have in there, but it's definitely not going to be more than a 5, and it may well be less. So you can see there, I'm poking it through, the length is such that it's not coming through the other side. It's coming up to the other side, but not through. So that way when I get it crimped, it splays out nicely, and you've not got a massive big ball of wire annoying you. And if you want, you can do the same thing, but just take out the actual other conductor. So you don't have to do them in the plug. Give yourself a bit of room, see how it works. But what I will advise, like now, you can see it's tight. You could use the plug to actually give you that extra leverage. And when you've put the wire in, we're going to actually pop that back in the plug and tighten it. So I'm just going to trim this one down, because I can see it's a bit too long. Pop that on, and away you go. So yeah, maybe we should talk about me blowing all my fuses, or I say blowing my fuses, tripping my RCDs, because I do have modern technology here. Um, I didn't trip the MCB, which is the main breaker, I just tripped the RCD, which are the current sensing devices, so it went too bad. 
So I'm going to pop that in like that. So that's how that would go. You're going to get your other conductor here. And I'm just going to nip these up. Nip them up a tiny bit. Bink. Bonk. And then get your correct fuse. And they come in a pack like that from the Poundland. So there you've got 3 amps, 5 amps and some 13 amps. And I'm going to take the 13 amp out of this and add it to my old tin full of fuses because I actually have a big multi-pack of 3 amp. I don't know why I needed so many 3 amps, but it's probably because I'm downgrading these like nobody's business. So I'm going to pop that in like that. So there's a nice 3 amp. So that's all good. And I'm going to wrap that strain relief back around. <laughs> there goes me earth. There goes me earth. It's a very very um, nice floppy plug this, isn't it? All the uh, conductors are just dropping out. What are they called? Conductors? Pins? I suppose you call them what you like, really. Get that in nice. This is a good plug, though, in that it feels like you could never pull that out. <laughs> and it's even got little nice metal ferrules in there. That's good. This is good quality. Perma plug. I think I got it from RS. But I will make a modification to this plug because I, uh, I'm always a bit cautious of this. You can see on the bottom of this plug it says 13 amps and I don't know if that's to say that this is capable of 13 amps or it contains a 13 amp fuse but I'm probably breaking the law by this by just I'm going to cut off at the one so it says 3 amps. So it says 3 amps there. Um, so that way if anybody else comes along in the future They'll replace it with a 3 amp, hopefully. I don't expect it to blow. So now, I'm going to I've turned off the lights. I'm plugging this in. And then I'm going to turn this on. Ah, I can see the glow. There is a glow in the drawer, actually. Look, you can probably... Maybe you can't see it. There's a little hole there, which I presume there should be a door handle, but you can see a little glow there. And this is a different UV light. This isn't the same as a sort of black light. It actually doesn't have that... Uh, UV freshness that we all want. So I put them in the little drawer, like so. You shut the drawer, you set it to like 10 minutes, whatever, six minutes, and leave it on and go away. And I don't know why I keep saying like. I'm gonna stop that, put the nip, nip that in the bud. So that's how you fix your EEPROM eraser and how you correct it for UK plugs. And then hopefully after that you'll be okay. As I say, there is UV light shooting out of this hole all the time, it's operational. So, um, I don't know, maybe I'm just gonna get a bit of tape. <laughs> Black probably is better. And just cover over that hole, just in case. You know, you don't want that hitting you all day, do you? So hope that's been of some use to you. Please like, share, subscribe. Come join me in my Discord if you want to be involved in this project or blow your own EEPROMs now. Get on that. Come to the uh, back of his show website and order your kit. As ever, thank you for watching. I've got two chips here. So this one. Yay! Oh, that was a read, not a blank check. Blank check. We know we've fallen for that before. Nope, blank check works on that one. I'm going to take that out. I'm going to try the second chip. Just going to clip that in. Uh, blank. Device is blank. Good. So it does work. Huzzah!